Next month, the Biomarkers of Aging Conference is returning in its second year after an incredibly successful debut. This is fast becoming a premier event in the field of longevity research, and it brings together leading scientists, industry experts, and healthcare innovators to explore the latest advancements in aging biomarkers, which as we all know in our field are super important. So the conference is being held at Harvard Medical School and aims to foster a collaboration and consensus on all aspects of biomarkers, how they can be defined, validated, and applied into real world settings. And this year, the event will also feature presentations for the first two phases of the Biomarker Challenge series, which recognizes innovative approaches to identifying and leveraging biomarkers to extend health span and lifespan. So if you're passionate about the science of aging, there's still time to get your tickets. But before we do that, I'm joined today by Jesse uh, Poganik and Mardi Mokri, who are two of the symposium's organizers uh, for, the, for the conference. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Great. So Jesse, how does this year's conference differ from, from last year's? So uh, last year, people may remember, we had our inaugural symposium uh, at the Buck Institute, and it was a one-day event, and um, it was quite successful, more successful than we might have uh, expected it to be at the beginning, but we were very pleased with how it went. And based on uh, the reception that we got for last year, we decided to expand the program in general this year. So uh, part of that was expanding the venue so that we could accommodate more people. We ended up right. selling out last year and we had to turn some people away at the end. So we didn't want to have that uh, be the situation again this year. So we moved to Harvard Medical School's uh, conference center, which has a much larger capacity. And we also expanded the program. So uh, we're no longer just a one-day event, uh, we're now a two-day event. That's also why we have rebranded this year as the Biomarkers of Aging Conference. Right. And we've uh, made changes to the program as well. So uh, this year, very broadly, the first day will be dedicated to academic research on biomarkers of aging, um, you know, how these can be applied in the laboratory, uh, to population studies, and uh, in basic research. And then the second day is broadly focused on translation. Uh, and this will be a very exciting program, I think. It's going to encompass a clinical component, component from pharma, component from longevity biotech, and a session from XPRIZE HealthSpan. So overall, I think we've designed a really exciting program uh, this year. And I think and hope it will be you know, even uh, more well received than it was last year. Well, I'm sure it will. And of course, we all know this is a hugely important subject uh, across all aspects of the, of the longevity field. So um, you mentioned translational research. So, so Marty, what's the significant theme in, in the aging science piece in terms of how do we look at translational focused sessions and uh, how, how are you managing that in, this, in the conference this year? Yeah, so translational aspect of biomarkers have been a focus from day one and the reason we started this consortium is uh, we realized that these biomarkers are already being used in clinical trials and the goal of the consortium as a whole and these uh, large events is to bring different uh, different parties and uh, learn how we can validate them how we can standardize them and uh, how we can uh, make them more reliable uh, different aspects of it. And one, uh, one effort that we did last year is at the same of the symposium, we collected uh, uh, information from all the experts in the field uh, as what they think are the most important challenges and uh, what are the roadmap uh, toward this translation. And uh, during the last 10 months or so, we put together these opinions and these uh, feedback and uh, now it's uh, it's published in the Journal of Nature Aging and that also gave us uh, some uh, ideas about whom to invite this year and uh, where we should focus more. So I haven't I have to say I haven't read that paper but when you talk about uh, the translational uh, piece what does that mean does that mean that you've got some commonality from the preclinical to the clinical and uh, from the clinical into the clinic itself when it's uh, in, in the healthcare systems how, how does that work yeah it turns out to be uh, much more challenging that uh, it's a uh, it's uh, perceived so uh, right now, there's a lot of progress in preclinical, in basic research. These biomarkers are being used in our own lab, in our colleague labs uh, at uh, top universities for guiding uh, and getting feedback from, uh, from experiments. 
And at the same time, they are being used in epidemiology very uh, successfully to connect uh, molecular biomarkers to age-related outcomes. But when we talk about clinical trials, uh, that's a completely different uh, domain where you need to have a biomarker that changes in response to an intervention. And okay. we still have a, we still need to do a lot to get there. So I guess that obviously um, the X Prize has got some pretty uh, robust goals, right? To 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 demonstrate the success. So obviously you mentioned Jamie Justice is going to be there. Presumably this is because they have a vested interest in making sure that everybody is working to the same set of biomarkers eventually, so that they can make their judgments on the on the same playing field. Yeah, definitely. That's the challenge for anyone who wants to prove that their interventions is uh, reversing aging or slowing down aging in a systemic way, and especially for XPRIZE with their very high bar. So we've been working together to set up some of these standards. It takes time and it won't be perfect, uh, but uh, we are starting to get to that. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So, so Jesse, obviously, the um, as, as mentioned earlier, the the conference has made a conscious effort to include these diverse sectors, obviously from biotech to pharma. Uh, do you have anybody from the uh, clinical community, for any any doctors attending as well? Yeah, of course. So uh, Andrea Meyer has been on our uh, steering committee from the beginning. We've worked very closely with her uh, since we've started the consortium. And um, as you know, she's uh, deeply, deeply into that space. And I think really one of the pioneers of bringing aging and longevity science to um, actual clinical practice. So um, one of the sessions on day two will be led by Andrea and uh, will be specifically focused on uh, clinical applications of these biomarkers. And um, if I could just plug another uh, kind of upcoming um, project of the consortium, we now have a team that is primarily composed of uh, clinicians who are uh, surveying the community to understand what clinicians feel we need uh, to make these tools useful for them, who will ultimately be the uh, you know some of the primary users. So yeah, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. Yeah, that's very interesting. So I mean, obviously, you know, a clinician will tell you, well, you know, how, how do you measure grip strength or timed up and go and so on. So do you see that they will be bringing more traditional clinical thinking into what you're doing within the consortium? Yeah, and I think um, ultimately that's that's useful for us. So um, you know, just kind of based on the, uh, uh, the group of people who form the consortium, you know, Maddie and I are primarily preclinical researchers uh, and many of the people uh, with some exceptions that uh, form the consortium at the beginning are preclinical researchers. And, and as Maddie alluded to earlier, most of the progress has been in the preclinical realm because there is just such this high bar for, for moving these things to the clinic, which is where we, we all ultimately wanna go. So um, we need that clinical perspective. And will they bring you know, more traditional thinking? Probably, but on the other hand, you know, uh, one of the big goals of the consortium, of course, is consensus building and the types of biomarkers that we're primarily focused on, you know, which are namely these composite uh, omics-based biomarkers are very different from uh, what is routinely used in the clinic now. Of course, things are changing and I think they'll continue to change. But, um, you know, we really see the consortium and uh, the conference as a way to bridge these two worlds that, you know, really ultimately need to be bridged mm -hmm. uh, for us to achieve this common goal of making these uh, tools clinically useful. Yeah, and I guess that you know, the, the overall the longevity industry is kind of at that stage where it's crying out for standards. Uh, and I guess in light of all of these advancements, um, how will the conference or the team get to the point where there's a, this evolving consensus becomes perhaps a standardized set of uh, reliable biomarkers? Are we are we close to that, or is that something that's still going to be a few years away? I think it will likely, you know, still be a few years away, but it's something we actively work on. And, you know, the question of how we get there, you know, our approach with the consortium and Madi should feed in at, uh, at some point too. our approach with the consortium has been to cast as wide in it as possible, you know, have as many uh, partners and collaborators bringing diverse viewpoints uh, to the table um, so that we can, uh, you know, produce something that will be useful uh, for the community in terms of standardizing the efforts. And I should say that, you know, it is not just the 
uh, it's not just industry that is calling out for these standards. I would say, you know, as an academic, academics also realize uh, that we really need to uh, standardize our efforts as well. So this is, um, you know, one of the longer term goals, I would say, of the consortium. Of course, yeah, more work needs to be done, uh, you know, to get there. So, Mari, what were your thoughts on that? Obviously, you know, this is a hugely important topic where we get to perhaps definition of biomarkers that everybody agrees on. Yeah, so you uh, mentioned a standardization and the first step toward the standardization is consensus on the definitions and terms and agreeing what's the scope of these biomarkers mm -hmm. and uh, what's the uh, what's the utility, uh, the context of use, and there are many, and uh, but we need to agree on particular utility, particular scope, particular context of use, and focus on that first before trying to apply these biomarkers to any domain from basic science to all the way uh, longevity interventions. But uh, toward that, we have spent the first, uh, first year in most of the 2022 and establish some consensus definition with uh, with the experts in the field. Great. So that's really interesting, Monty. But uh, I guess the question really is: so you're saying that you're you've got the building blocks in place, and we've got the components of the clinicians and uh, the researchers and farmer and so on coming together. So we're still a little bit away off now until we get to the point where we can say the consortium has actually established an industry standard for for aging biomarkers. Yeah, maybe uh, more accurately is uh, we, we, we think about this standardization as an ongoing effort. There won't be a, a time that we say we are done with the standardization. But for this year, what we have focused mostly is on the more common, uh, one of the most common omics uh, in the field, which is epigenetics. We've been spending a lot of time on standardizing epigenetic data, especially for microarrays, which is the most commonly used uh, in biological, <clears throat> biological aging tests. So we have a right. standard for epigenetic data right now. <clears throat> and now we are focusing on uh, designing some standards for biobanking, for biobanking specifically for longevity studies. So longitudinal okay. biobankings, including omics and functional assays. Oh, that's very interesting. So just to pick up on those two points then. So on the epigenetic side, Obviously, we're aware that from a consumer perspective, epigenetics is becoming, you know, kind of a, a very interesting theme in the space. Uh, with that work that comes out of the consortium, will that actually be able to roll back and say, OK, well, actually, there's a standardization that we agree on. And really, you know, for us to be able to, I'm not saying you're going to, but to, to be in a position where you can say, well, we align with the consortium standards. There may be some adjustment in what these companies are claiming or how they look at their science in the future. Yeah, so the first step is standardizing data. And on the epigenetic side, there are biomarkers formulation of this composite, uh, this uh, biological age, but there's also data storage and data formatting and how to use and share data. So the first right. step uh, this year, we've uh, developed a, an open source library called BioLair, and it's available to anyone to use and contribute to. It's a decentralized mechanism for this standardization. It's been developed for other fields, uh, including neuroscience uh, and uh, other biomarkers field. So we adopted that, uh, that library and more than a year we've been developing it uh, with the help of Methuselah Foundation. And we already have uh, harmonized uh, around 50 of existing epigenetic biomarkers. And that has provided a platform for new biomarkers to be standardized and add it to this uh, open library. Oh, that's very, very interesting. And then just to roll back, I mean, Jesse, you know, this, this concept of obviously also standardizing the way you interpret biobank data, will that follow the same trajectory? I think so. Um, you know, the, the idea or the, the intention behind bio, uh, BioLearn and its future use would be that you come to BioLearn with, uh, for instance, a new biomarker formulation or a new data set, and you know, uh, almost instantaneously, you get all of the feedback uh, based on what we've uh, built into BioLearn and what we know, you know, the, the state of the art of the science, uh, and and that allows you to, you know, almost immediately um, calculate and compare your biomarker or your uh, the performance of various biomarkers on your data. So um, 
you know, the, there's a new project now, uh, which I'm sure Mari would like to talk about more, um, our, our longevity study. And uh, to your point about standardization of biobanking protocols, um, this is going to be a study that the consortium runs uh, to essentially biobank specifically for the purpose of studying aging and longevity uh, samples collected longitudinally over time. And um, this is a very, very nascent effort um, started literally weeks ago. And uh, nevertheless, uh, what I would highlight, though, is that we're trying to be as open as possible. Uh, we're making all of the uh, protocol documents and instruments that we're using open source, uh, you know, freely available on the website. And as we learn and as we hopefully develop standards that will be useful for the field, um, you know, we hope that others will, will adopt this as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess it, it really makes sense to do so, right? Because obviously, if you've got the uh, uh, all the big hitters in the industry saying this is the way you need to be counting things and, uh, and assessing data, uh, it would be crazy to to go against that, right? Because I guess this is the, this, this is the benefit of really uh, the tide rising all boats, right? Which is which is very exciting. So um, I guess that also some of the participants that are coming to the conference, they'll be enrolling uh, in a pilot phase of a longevity study and they'll be giving samples, right? Is that that's something new? Yes, uh, I can tell you a little bit about that. So as Jesse mentioned, it's our newest program. Uh, it started a few months ago, but uh, we have pre-piloted the protocol. Uh, we have uh, approval from our uh, institute and um, it's been reviewed by ethic committees. Uh, or maybe uh, exempted from review by ethics because we are focusing on simple uh, tests uh, using blood tests. So we collect blood samples uh, and we perform, uh, we measure some of the functional assays. And the goal would be to connect the uh, blood biomarkers and these functional assays in a longitudinal manner. And uh, since we are hosting our events uh, every year, and that's a perfect uh, place to recruit. Uh, participants for longitudinal repeated measurements and sample collection. So yes, uh, we are uh, recruiting some of the conference participants for this pilot study, and uh, it will be uh, right before the conference. That's great. So we'll find out if they've been spending too long in the lab and not enough time uh, with their trainers on, right? Yeah. Well, great. Uh, guys, I, I guess it's... Uh, we, we're very excited about the work that you're doing. I think it's, uh, from an industry perspective, it's a, it's a great mature step that everything's starting to take. So really happy to uh, to support you. And obviously, please keep us updated on on the outcomes from the uh, from the conference. And of course, we'll make sure that all of our readers get the link uh, on social and in the article. So thanks very much for joining us today. It's been brilliant. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. Thank you.